Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're talking about Sigmund Freud. Without a doubt, the biggest name in psychology ever is Sigmund Freud and Dr. Phil, but Sigmund Freud. But why? I mean, what makes Freud so famous? Well, Freud lived an incredibly interesting life. I mean, the man was rescued from Nazis by a princess. That alone should be a movie. People remember Freud for lots of things. For developing talk therapy, for being the first one to ever attempt clinical therapy, for everything being about sex, and for doing a whole lot of cocaine. Weird thing is though, none of this is true. Freud was not the first person to use talk therapy. It was actually his mentor, a guy by the name of Josef Brewer. And Josef Brewer did truly groundbreaking work with a patient under the pseudonym of Anna O. Brewer called his method for treating Anna O's nervous disorder the cathartic method or what became to be known as the talking cure. Brewer took a more holistic approach to working with his patients than anybody else was doing at the time. Instead of just asking specifically about what their problem was, he wanted to talk about everything about them, all areas of their life, exactly what they were going through, exactly how they were feeling about what they were going through. Freud was also not the first one to try clinical therapy. I mean, if you were listening to me talk about Brewer, I mean, that sounds a lot like clinical therapy. And the myth that Freud was the first one to do clinical therapy probably stems from Freud's popularization of psychoanalysis. Uh, psychoanalysis is a theory that tries to figure out how your unconscious thoughts and feelings affect you. In psychoanalysis, the goal of therapy is to release all of these repressed feelings and unconscious emotions so that you can have a healing, cathartic experience. Sound familiar? Yeah, because it's all based again on the work of Freud's mentor, Josef Brewer. Freud did write and get published the very first ever book on psychoanalysis called The Studies of Hysteria. His co-author was Josef Brewer. Freud also didn't really believe that everything was about sex. Um, a lot of those ideas weren't even his. They were based on the ideas of his friend, Wilhelm Fleiss. And Fleiss was a medical doctor who thought a lot of theories about human biorhythms and innate bisexuality, which Freud incorporated into his own work. Although he certainly did have some thoughts on sex, uh, a lot of confusion here seems to be more about the use of the word libido. Today, we think of libido as being really all about sex, but Freud meant libido as more of an energy source that we can tap into or an energy source that drives us to do something. Even Freud's most popular quote about sex, you know, that sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, we have no proof that he even said. So what exactly was it that made Freud so famous? Well, Freud seemed to be a really great self-promoter. He gave talks to the right people at the right time, and he never seemed to shy away from the limelight. Sad fact of the matter is, some people become great because they think they are great, <laughs> and they don't shy away from telling others how great they think they are. Uh, without a doubt, Freud's legacy is still being felt today. While he might be controversial, uh, there's no doubt he left a lasting impact in the field of psychology. If you'd like to know some of the theories that influenced Freud's psychoanalysis, you can find those here. Or to check out our latest video, click here. Until we see you again, 
Happy thinking. See y'all later. Bye. Yeah, you'll you'll notice I don't mention the cocaine again. Yeah, dude, dude actually did a, a lot of cocaine, like a lot, a lot of cocaine.